Good morning everyone. I hope you're well and good today. So, before we're going to discuss our new topic for this for this week, let's have first a recap. Last week we discussed about the basic economic problems of the country. So this time, we are going to discuss the basic analysis of demand and supply. As first the demand so what is a demand so when we say demand is is generally affected by the behavior of consumers while supply is usually affected by the conduct of producers the interplay between these two is the foundation of economic activity thus the economic identifies his or her needs wants and demands while producers address this by accordingly producing goods and services. In the end, the consumer gains satisfaction while the producers gain from And what is market? So when we say market, is where buyers and sellers meet. Meet rather. It is the place where they both trade and exchange goods or services. In other words, it is where their transaction takes place. So we have here law of demand. The law of demand states that if the price is just up, automatic the quantity of demand will go down. Conversely, if the price go down, the quantity of demand will go up. Caesarize Pabero. Par parebus. The reason for this is because consumers always tend to make maximized satisfaction. So we have here a table 2.1. Hypothetical demand is scheduled per price per month. So we have a situation, price, quantity. For situation, we have A, B, C, D, and E. And then for the price of A, 5, B, 4, C, 3, D, 2, and then E, 1. So this table shows the various prices and quantities for the demand for rice per month. For instance, at given price of 5 pesos, the buyer is willing to or the buyer is willing to purchase only 8 kilograms of rice situation A. However, at a price of 1 pesos, he is willing to buy 45 kilog kilograms of rice situation A. So, demand curves. It is graphical presentation showing the relationship between the price and quantities demanded per time period. A demand curve has negative slope that is sloped downward from left to right. The downward slope indicates the inverse relationship between price and quantity demanded. Table 2.1 Demand Curve So we have here a picture. This is the, this is the demand curve. So, this figure illustrates a, ty a typical demand curve. The y-axis represents the price, so this it's the P, and then while the x-axis represents the quantity demanded, which is Q, the demand curve is negatively sloped or, slope or downward sloping. The negative slope measures the change in quantity demanded for a unit change in price. And then this indicates that as the price of commodities decrease, more go goods will be taught by the So, we have here a demand function. So, a demand function shows the real the relationship between demand for a commodity and the factors that determine or influence this demand. These factors are the price of commodity, itself prices of other related commodities, consumers, level, level of income, taste and preference, size and composition of level of populations, distributions of income, etc. Demand functions is expressed as, as a mathematical function. 
So we are we are a picture of change in quantity demanded. So this picture, this figure illustrates the concept of change in quantity demanded. Change in quantity demanded occurs when price of the product changes, thus resulting to a change in quantity demanded. This is the illustrated in the graph above along the demanded curve from point A to point B. So we have here the forces that cause of demand curve to change. There are several reasons why demand changes and thus cause the demand curve to change. The following are the more general reason for the change and demand. Number one, taste or preference. A taste or preference pertain to a personal likes or dislike of consumer for a certain goods and services. If taste or a preference changes so that want to buy more of a commodity at a given price, then increase in demand will result or vice versa. Changing incomes. When we say changing incomes, increasing incomes of household raise the demand for a certain goods and services or vice versa. This is because an increase in one's income generally his or her capacity or power to demand for goods and services which he is not able to purchase at lower income. And then occasional or regional products. The various events or seasons in a given year also result to a movement of the demand curve with reference or particularly particular goods. For example, during Christ seasons, demand for Christmas trees, parrots, and other Christ decors increased. So, substitutes goods. When I say substitutes goods, are goods that are interchanged with another good. In a situation where the price of particular good increased, a consumer will tend to look for a closely, closely related commodities. And then population change. An increasing population leads to an increase in the demand for some types of goods or services, and vice versa. More people simply mean that more goods or services are to be demanded. So, expectation of future prices. If expect the price of a kid or services to rise or fall in the future, it may cause the current demand to increase or decrease. Also, expectation about the future may alter demand for a specific commodity. So, law of supply. The law of supply states that if the price of a good or services goes up, the quantity supplied for a such good or services will also go up. If the price go down, goes, goes down, the quantity supplied also goes down. Citeris paribus. Table, table 2.2 Hypothetical supply schedule for rice per month. So we have here a situation, price, and quantity. So this table shows the various prices and quantities for the supply for rice per month. For instance, at the given price of 5 pesos, the seller is willing to sell 48 kilograms of rice. Situation A, however, at a price of 1 pesos, he, 1 peso rather, he is willing to sell 5 kilograms of rice situation A. And then supply curve. This is graphical representation showing the relationship between the price of the product or factor of production, example labor, and then the quantity supplied for a time period. The typical market supply curve for a product slope, slopes rather, Upward from the left to right, indicating that as the price rises, falls, or more or less is supplied. The applied or the upward slope indicates the positive relationship between price and quantity. 
we have here this curve of supply. This figure a typical supply curve. The y-axis represents the price and the y-axis x-axis rather represents the quantity supplied Q. The supply curve is positively sloped or upward sloping. This positive slope indicates that as the price of commodities increase or decreases, more or less goods will be offered for sale by the producers. And then supply functions. As supply functions is a form of mathematical notation that links the deep dependent variable quantity supplied Q with various independent variables which determine quantity supplied. Among the factors that influence the quantity supplied are price of the product, numbers of sellers in the market, price of factors input, technology, business goals, importations, weather conditions, and government. Gover so we have here uh, figure 2.5. The change in quantity supplied. So we have here a picture. So this picture, this figure illustrates change in quantity supplied. Change in quantity supplied happens when price is the, of the product changes. Thus, resulting to a change in quantity supplied, this is illustrated in a graph above where P increased to a P resulting to a change in Q to Q and movement along the same supply curve from point A to point B. So we have here also the forces that, that cause the supply curve to change. Just like the demand, there are also forces that cause the supply curve to change. Below are some of the reasons that cause the supply curve to change. And then up optimization in the use of factors of production. An optimization in the utilization of resources will increase supply, while a failure to achieve such will to a decrease in supply. Optimization, optimization refers to the process or methodology of making something as fully perfect, functional, or effective as possible. Simply put, it is efficient use to resources. In business parlance, it could mean maximum production of output at minimum cost. So, technological change. The introduction of cost-reducing innovation and production technology increases supply on one hand. On the other hand, this can also decrease supply by means of freezing the production through the prob problems that that the new technology might encounter, such as technical trouble, some reasons, or Nordhaus 2004. So, future expectation. This factor impacts sellers as much as buyers. If sellers anticipate a rise in prices, they may choose to hold back the current supply to take advantage of the future increase in price, thus decreasing market supply. If sellers however expect a decline in the price for their products, they will increase present supply. So, numbers of sellers. The number of sellers has a direct impact of quantity supplied. Simply put, the more sellers there are in the market, the greater supply of goods and services will be available. For example, during the Christmas season, more Triangle stores sell t-shirts RTWS resulting to an increase in the av available shirts and RTWS in the market. Moreover, if more farmers will plant rice instead of other crops, then the supply of rice in the market will increase due to more production assuming that no destructive calamities will strike the country. Of course, one of the most important is the weather conditions. Bad weather such as typhoons, drought, and droughts of other natural disasters reduces supply of agriculture commodities. 
while good weather has an opposite impact. For instance, if a typhoon destroys the vegetable farms in Bangkok, will will decline. And then the last one is the government policy. Removing quotas or traffic and imported products also affects supply, lower trade restriction, and lower quotas of traffic boost imports thereby adding more supply of goods in the market. In order for imported products or to be accepted in a country, there are need to import to pay the government the required traffic or duties and taxes. Importers must also abide by the quota required by the government on certain products. Quotas are limitation in the number or qualities of imported goods which could enter the country. This is used in order to protect domestic or local products. So, any questions, clarifications, additions? So, if you don't have any questions, just go to your learning path for your activity and then just call me or message me at 0926-297-4685. So, that's all. Thank you. Thank you and God bless.